Hello Gut Squad and welcome back to my channel. This is Cecily as always. Today is going to be a video going over briefly all of the complicating things that can happen right after your stoma operation. Now, if you're someone who's watching this video and you're about to get your stoma, please do not be worried or scared by any of the things that I bring up. Yes, some of them can be life-threatening and yes, some of them can be really painful and dangerous. But in most cases, people come out of stoma surgeries just fine. Stoma operations are increasingly common in the United States and other countries, especially for young adults. You need to be aware that your risks are fairly low in the measure of all surgical operations you could possibly have in your life. Stoma operations are usually not too dangerous. And I would advise that if you have questions and concerns after watching this video, please do further research. I'll put some links in the description below so you can read about these things for yourself, get some really good references and a good idea of what you're headed into. All the things I'm gonna list have a fairly low probability of occurring, but it's important to be aware of your risks before any kind of surgery, even a dental cleaning. <laughs> you should be aware of the things that could happen. The first issue that we're going to address is actually the most common and the most preventable issue, which is improper site selection. Improper site selection occurs when your surgeon places the stoma in an area on your abdominal wall that is just not great for having a stoma. For instance, you could have a folding of your skin on the abdomen that makes it super hard for a bag to cling to the area around the stoma, which is called the peristomal area. It makes it really difficult for the patient or ostomy nurse to place a bag on that area of your abdomen and like still live normal everyday life. If you have a lot of abdominal skin folding on your belly and your surgeon places the stoma in an area that has a lot of this folding happening, it is gonna make it hard for the bag to adhere because the bag typically needs like a smooth, even surface to stick to in order to be a good, long lasting bag that'll get you through like three to seven days of wear. You may need to go to a bag that is more suited for people who have like bulging or folding or scars any kind of divoting or bumpiness in the abdominal surface. I always recommend to people who have this problem, the Centura Neo Flip. This is a really, really nice bag because it has like a star pattern and it kind of helps adhere to the, to the skin better. It can either be kind of convex like this or it can go in and be like concave as well. I love this bag because as you can see, the way that it's patterned makes it super flexible, especially for people with hernias or a lot of skin folding around the area where your stoma is. The other thing that you can do preoperatively to prevent this problem is consulting with your ostomy nurse directly before the stoma. They will usually take a marker, literally a marker, and they'll just make a little X wherever you are gonna be having the stoma. Typically, they will give you the option if you are going into an elective stoma surgery to say, oh, I would like my stoma in the upper left quadrant in the lower left quadrant, in the upper right quadrant. This is really, really common. What I would recommend to you guys is after they make that little X marks the spot area on your belly, ask for a few sample bags to take home with you before the operation. It's important to kind of premeditatively look at where you're going to get your stoma, try a bag out for a few days, make sure you like the placement, make sure that it's not, you know, in an area with a ton of folding of your abdomen if you have some belly fat and it folds a lot like try to avoid areas with that specific problem try to avoid areas where you may have scarring from previous surgeries which is what I had I had to play around with mine quite a bit but usually you and your ostomy nurse will be able to decide on an area that's really good for the ostomy and they the surgeons always try to go and put the ostomy or the, the stoma in an area that the patient wants but that's not always the case in fact for me with my most recent stoma the best stoma I've had had, they had to put the stoma in the upper right quadrant, which was not exactly where I wanted it per se. I wanted it in one of my lower quadrants, but those lower quadrants were just not strong enough to have a stoma. And it's imperative that you have a really strong abdominal rectus muscle placement so that you're not prone to things like herniation or prolapse. Ultimately, it's really the decision of the surgeon where the stoma will go, but you as the patient have 
every license to say, oh, I'd prefer it in this area, and this is the area that I tested at home with a mock stoma bag, just to make sure that there wasn't any incorrect folding or uncomfortable placement of the stoma bag, because you're gonna have to live with this thing every day, and ultimately it's you who has to live with it, of course. So my recommendation to everyone who asks, like, where should I get the stoma? is it's a really personal decision. It has a lot to do with how your abdominal wall is, how much belly fat you have, where your belly fat is deposited, what kind of scarring you may have, if you have hernias, things like that. These are things that you need to be aware of when you're trialing the placement of your bag. And it may take a few weeks even to decide where you really want it. Take your time and try to go into it as premeditatively as possible. The next thing that we're going to talk about is something that people who are going into an ostomy surgery, as well as people who've just had their ostomy surgery and people who had their ostomy 10 years Years ago should be aware of and that is vascular compromise it's one of the more prevalent reasons that stomas fail I've had this happen to me and it was very scary at the time so let's get into what this is vascular compromise just refers to the stoma not getting enough blood supply for whatever reason there are quite a few reasons that this can happen the most prevalent symptom that you'll find as the patient is that your stoma will change color pretty drastically so that's why I always recommend to people that they should look at their stoma at least once a day, really inspect it, check out the color and see like, okay, is it pink? Is it purple? A very healthy stoma will have a kind of like pink or reddish look. And if you touch it, it'll usually kind of turn like pale and then it'll come right back to being pink or reddish. That is normal for a stoma. And a healthy stoma will always have like a really rich blood supply. If you have loss of this blood supply, which is called ischemia in the medical community, then you will have like a dark or grayish look to the stoma. It'll be kind of like dusky. And typically it will be accompanied by a diminished function. So maybe your output slows down. And if that happens, check out your stoma. If the stoma is looking dark, purplish, dusky, grayish, you know to call your surgeon's office or your nurse and just say, can you guys take a look at this? This is not normal. A lot of these vascular problems occur directly after the stoma surgery itself. So that's kind of when you're at the greatest risk for these things. And that's when the surgeon can really go back in and either revise the stoma, restore blood flow, whatever they need to do to ensure that that stoma is getting adequate blood flow. One of the reasons that vascular compromise is so common in small bowel stomas, particularly like ileostomies, if you've heard of those, if you have one, that's what I have. The surgeon really needs to be careful to make sure that the mesentery around your bowel is supplying it with plenty of blood. The mesentery is an organ in your abdominal cavity that supplies the bowel with things like blood and fat reserves and lymphatic tissue. Making sure that the mesentery is intact is really important and it's hard to do. So surgeons sometimes are human just like the rest of us and they don't get this perfect and that's okay. It's really up to you and your ostomy nurse and anyone who may be helping you look after your ostomy to be vigilant about checking the color of the ostomy, be vigilant about making sure that the ostomy is outputting appropriately and normally. And if it's not, then you need to go back to the surgeon and say there's a serious problem. Usually these vascular issues, this like dusky purplish look to a stoma will mean that you have no blood flow or limited blood flow and it means you need emergent help. So don't wait. If you guys see anything fishy about your stoma's color, even if it's just sending a picture to your ostomy nurse and saying, what do you think of this? Try to reach out to someone because I, in most cases, you'll be happy that you did. If for no other reason than to make sure that that's just a normal stoma color and you're just having a different day than usual. You should be alarmist about these things because stoma blood supply is something that's really important to maintain. And if you don't maintain it, then again, we run into issues like necrosis and tissue death. The next thing that we're going to 
talk about is stoma retractions. A retraction is when the stoma goes beneath the surface of the skin. So say that this is this is your normal stoma, this is the normal surface of the skin, you got like an inch or two out. Imagine the stoma goes like underneath the skin pretty substantially and it just can't be seen sometimes. Sometimes you literally can't even see the stoma. Sometimes it looks really puckered and it's just like hiding under the skin. That's something that I have nowadays and I've spoken with my surgeons. It's nothing life-threatening. It's nothing too serious. However, if you're like day two after your stoma operation and you're retracting really severely, you're gonna wanna tell someone because sometimes the stoma retractions aren't quite so benign. Sometimes it means that you have like way too much pressure on the bowel or the mesentery that supports the bowel and you might need a revision or you might need them to go back in and just alter something to alleviate that pressure. While retractions are usually not like life-threatening or super dangerous, they can be a problem because it can make getting a seal on your bag really difficult. If you suffer with retractions, I would advise doing what I do, which is to use a convex bag instead of a normal flat wafer bag, because convex bags provide a little bit more structure and they sort of cushion the stoma to make sure that even if it retracts and goes underneath the surface of the skin, there's still a, a padding around the stoma of the wafer to make sure that the retraction doesn't blow off your bag and make the bag impossible to seal. If you have a retraction directly after your stoma operation, please consult with your doctor or your nurse because it might not be normal and it might be something that really needs surgical intervention. And even if you've had your stoma for three years and it suddenly starts retracting, I would still talk to your surgeon or your ostomy nurse about it or even your gastroenterologist because they might want to do CT scans or other tests to see what's going on and why the retraction is occurring in the first place. But in general, they're pretty benign and I wouldn't go worrying about them too much. They're fairly uncommon with ostomies that are placed correctly. The next thing I want to address are peristomal hernias and bowel obstructions. Many of you may be aware of what a hernia is already, but just for shits and giggles, I'll go over it again. Basically, a hernia is any time that a portion of your bowel is able to escape the abdominal wall or your pelvic muscles, whatever muscle wall that it gets through due to weakening, straining, injury, whatever. And it basically creates like a sac or a looping of intestine in an area that intestine absolutely should not be, okay? Hernias can be painful, but they can also be dangerous. If you have a stoma operation, you're getting a hole in your abdominal wall created so that your bowel can be taken out through it and poke through to the outside world, if you will. Anytime you make a hole in the abdominal wall on purpose, you are at risk for making the perfect place for a hernia to emerge. Peristomal hernias occur usually when the hole for your stoma, which is called the fascial opening, is just too large. They make it larger than it should be, usually by accident, and then some bowel is allowed to come out and create like a sac, and in that sac, the bowel can become entangled and obstructed. That's what people refer to as an incarcerated hernia. So an incarcerated hernia is when the bowel is actually like caught up in the sac of a hernia and can't move, can't let stool through, and that's an obstruction. And that's when things get dangerous. If you are concerned that you might have a hernia, if you're having the kind of pain and lack of stool that is consistent with a hernia, I would say first reach out to your ostomy nurse, have her take a look at the area. Usually there will be like a big bowl around the stoma if that's the case and you'll probably need to go in for a CT scan. I think even some x-rays can see these hernias if they're severe enough and you'll probably need another surgery just to patch that up. Just to kind of close things off here guys, I would say that the best thing to keep in mind after your abdominal surgery or your stoma surgery or any surgery you have is that it's really important to monitor your symptoms for the first few weeks after the surgery, maintain all of the surgical guidelines that you're given, and also also, if you have a stoma, really take a look at it as often as you can. Make sure that it has the right color, the right feel, that it's outputting appropriately, not outputting too little. If you feel a lot of pain around the area that is not just normal surgical pain, soreness from being cut open, do not hesitate to call your, your doctor 
your nurse. That's why they're there. They're there to answer your questions and alleviate your concerns. In my experience, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's usually a duck. <laughs> and every time that I've needed a bowel revision, I went into the hospital knowing that something was horribly wrong. I also want to close by saying that ostomy surgeries are very common and that they are usually one of the safest kinds of surgeries that you can have performed on your abdomen. They are pretty benign. The stoma is usually just fine and has plenty of blood flow. Bowel is very resilient. Bowel tissue is really good at regenerating. So you heal pretty quickly in your bowels. You'll create adhesions and other little differences in your anatomy that will help you cope with the loss of intestine that you probably experienced if you had an ostomy of some kind. And in the end, especially people with UC and Crohn's are really gonna benefit from having their colons removed or having whatever problematic portion of the bowel removed because that's the portion of the bowel that usually gives them pain and suffering and makes them unable to eat. So in general, ostomy surgery save lives and they are really helpful for the people who have them. My ostomy gave me a new lease on life and gave me my continence back and gave me a lot of control over my disorder that I just didn't have before. But it's not to say that ostomy surgery doesn't come without its measure of risks and complications. And these were just some of the main ones that I want you guys to be aware of so that you go into your ostomy surgery or you come out of your ostomy surgery feeling educated and like you can have competent discussions with your doctor about your symptoms. And that is it for me today. Please guys, leave in the comments below if you found the video interesting, if there's anything you'd like to add to the list, if there's stuff that you've gone through after your ostomy surgery that just totally blew your mind and you were like, oh God, I'd wish I'd heard of this thing before I got my ostomy surgery so I would have known what to look for. Love you guys and I hope you all are staying safe, healthy, happy, hydrated, and of course, COVID free. Have a great day. See you later, Gut Squad. Bye. Freya is just going crazy, guys. Freya, what are you doing? You don't like the new lights.